Hello and welcome to this third and probably final video regarding Azio Link Pro. This is a much more visual representation of everything, so we're going to cut right into it. First and foremost, you're going to wind up pulling up this website, which link will be in the description. At the bottom of this website, you'll wind up having some download links and a couple of other things, including uh, access to other pages or posts as this website's set up to do them. Uh, at the bottom, you're going to have a patcher and installer tool which both should work, but another page has another couple of downloads and the final page has another download and downloads for patchers as well. All of this should work one way or another, but download accordingly. Once you have it all installed, you're going to run the patcher in the directory for the version that you're using, whether it's 32 bit or 64 bit, and it should work. It took me a couple of tries. When you're done with that, you're going to go to your sound properties. You're going to notice a lot of speakers and mixes in your playback and recording. Disable the ones that you do not need specifically. For me, I have four speakers and about 10 mixes. I may wind up later on removing a couple that I don't need, but these are gonna help you out in routing between a variety of things. And then you're gonna open the control panel for Azio Link Pro. Here, you're gonna set the sample rate and the buffer size for your audio interface. For me, I'm running at 48 kilohertz and 256 samples. Pretty low latency, but still a little bit. Channel in and out, however many you need, you set it to. For me, I'm running 12 in and 12 out. I might need a little less, I might need a little bit more. Adjust this part to your taste specifically. And then here is the main control panel, visually represented and more animated here. So when we look at this, the first thing we're gonna do is these two right here would be the first speaker set. So if you're outputting something from software on say speaker one or speaker two, it's gonna relate. This strip here is your inputs for your audio interface. You have anywhere from two to eight physical inputs. Mine has my microphone on input one. My guitar typically goes in on input four. Post in allows you to send a signal from your interface or another source into your recording application like Reaper if you're using it. Driver out allows you to monitor some of those as well as route from there to your mix output stage, which is at the bottom here. Each group of one and two down here at the bottom represents a mix output in stereo configuration, which also relates to the drivers that you saw in your sound properties. At the top here, you have your speakers in. This could be anything such as uh, if you're wanting to route your Winamp or Spotify or whatever media player you use. Another note with my driver in, microphone is going to one, guitar typically goes to four. Nine and 10 are loopbacks, which are provided with the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 and most of the interfaces in the uh, third gen from at least what I can remember. And most of the routing concepts that you can come up with in the software are relatively limitless given the limitations of 64 in and 64 out. Uh, a couple of these things that I'm also showing on screen are concepts of if you want to route something specific to any given input or output based on if it's an application or if it's a microphone, if it's a guitar, bass guitar, if you have a separate mixer from your own interface and you want to feed the signal in like a sampler or whatever, or even a synth, you can pretty much route anything wherever you want. And this should be a good representation of that. One of the things that you can do with this, however, when you have messed up something is hover over these parts and just left click. You're not going to see it happen in the middle of the bar. You have to kind of do it nearby the host connection. But this allows you to work with the routing system as flawlessly as you possibly can. As far as Discord is concerned for me, I usually send everything through Mix 1 as a input. So everything that goes through the first one and two acts more or less like a, a microphone. So I can feed Winamp or my guitar through it or whatever. I can feed Reaper through it or my web browser if I really wanted to. So just kind of an idea. Whatever you're going to send out, you send out. And you can also select a separate uh, set of speakers in this section here if you don't want it to go out of your main. Though this is kind of my preference. I prefer to do it either on two or I'll do it through my audio interface. 
And last but not least, we're going to deal with OBS Studio. The same thing here applies for Streamlabs OBS. For this, you're going to want to click on Add an Audio Input Capture Source. You can name it whatever you want based on whatever it is that you're going to route through it. For me, I'm doing microphone and I'm doing it on mix 01. And then I'm going to add a second one here and I'm going to call this Winamp basically. And I'm going to set that to come in through mix number two. And then I'm going to add a third one just because maybe, you know, who knows, but I'm going to deal with discord audio input. And that could be anything going on from voice chat. And I'm going to send that out over to uh, Mix 3. And once I have all of these set up, they're going to be down here in the audio mixer. So you'll see a signal from them as long as everything is active and all that kind of stuff. One thing I'd like to make a note of here before we end this is if you're done using the software, make sure that you do not disconnect or power down your audio interface without changing your drivers back around to your interfaces drivers. Otherwise you will encounter a blue screen. And with that questions and feedback in the comments down below, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, if you got it to work or if you learned something brand new today and there will be a new video coming up pretty soon. Thank you very much.